From gate drop to checkered flag, Pro Motocross is a grueling test of man and machine. And only the mentally and physically strong accept this challenge. And earlier today, these riders were put to the test. Ken Roxon to the early lead. Pulling away from the field, a battle for second ensues. Eli Tomac gets rolling first around his old rival, Jason Anderson, and then he tracks down and passes Ken Roxon to take the Moto win in his home state. But now here comes the most challenging part, going out and doing it again an hour later. 450 Moto 2, moments away. Welcome everybody, it's round three of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, the Toyota Thunder Valley National, just outside of Denver, Colorado. We are here in Lakewood, about 10 minutes to gate drop. Jason Boygan joined by the greatest of all time, the 15-time champion, Ricky Carmichael. Eli Tomac has laid down the gauntlet in Moto1. Yeah, he put the screws to these guys late in the race. We've seen him do it so many times in his Lucas, Pro, uh, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship career. And man, it was so fun to watch. I thought Ken Roxon had it, but uh, just ran out of juice there towards the end. All right, let's show it to you with our Lucas Oil race recap from the first moto. This is an hour ago. We'll combine these results with the moto upcoming. Determine your overall weight. You can see it's hot down there. Combine that with 6,000 feet of elevation. It is a true challenge. The veteran nine-time world champion out of Italy, a very popular hole shot for Tony Caroli. But Ken Roxon is so quick early in these races. Well, he is an average start. I mean, there's no one better in the in the series than Kenny Roxon. He's going to get out to the lead first and do what he does a lot. You know, he just checks out and then rides his own race. Here's the move on Caroli early. This dude never really got a chance to race back in Europe, the Italian <laughs> and the German, because Roxon moved to the U.S. so early. They've become really good friends here now that Caroli is vacationing in the U.S. No friendships on the racetrack, though. Roxon's got to go. Yeah, that was a great run. Kenny just held on the gas around that outside sweeping corner, was able to carry more speed and momentum, and that's how he was able to make the pass. They start moving around Crowley. First, Justin Barsha, and here a risky move by Jason Anderson. Right up the inside with authority. Power move by Anderson, holding the gas on, knowing that he can't let Justin Barsha and Ken Roxon keep pulling away. And then Eli Tomek starts to stir first. He's got Barsha. You gotta give it up to that Troy Lee Designs Red Bull gas gas machine. They definitely have made some improvements. Oh, oh, oh. Anderson clips one of the trackside markers, and now Tomac is all over him. And once Tomac's got you in sight late in the moto, even the likes of Anderson are gonna be hard pressed to hold him off. Eli's around for second. And then, Six second deficit to Roxon, it's gone in a hurry, yeah. and Eli's gonna go to the inside. I mean, Eli put the afterburners on, marches up through the field, closes that six second gap, like you said, and the rest is history. Yeah, Roxon kept it close for about a lap here, almost got him back on the start stretch, but then Eli found another gear down the stretch, pulled away, and I just wanted to lay out there so you could hear the fans. They were going nuts with this effort. He is a Colorado native. They come here to see him win, and he gave them exactly what they wanted. Kept it interesting with a bad start all the way through, and you can hear that crowd response. Tomac now has two moto wins in this series. Don't look now. He is starting to roll. Roxon and Anderson hold on for second and third. There's the rest of your top 10, Sexton and Caroli. In the top five, Chris Craig came from last to 10th. Send it down to Will Christian with a pre-race report. Will? Well, finishing off the podium there in that first moto for 450, guys, was our red plate runner. That's Chase Sexton over at Honda HRC. So now, moto two, we know how this works. These scores are combined, so it's time to turn it around for Chase. When I was talking to the team earlier, they're obviously very pleased with how the beginning of this season's gone. They said he really feels like he belongs in this class now, only 22 years old, guys. He's got a lot ahead of him. The uh, veterans of the sport there are firing here on all cylinders as we started this season. Can Chase hold on to this moto and perhaps get in the mix here, guys, and hold on to the right plate as we move forward? It is going to be a real test for him, Will, because Tomac, with those two straight moto wins, including one an hour ago, starting to... The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. While other sports have their debate as to who is the best of all time in motocross, the answer is clear cut. That answer, it's Ricky Carmichael.
The Tallahassee, Florida native created a decade of dominance that will never be repeated. 10 years, 10 titles. RC's average margin of victory in his championship seasons is 98 points, almost two total races. He holds the most combined overall wins at 102 and the most combined moto wins at 189. And second place isn't even close. He's credited with changing the sport. After Carmichael, riders started putting fitness at the forefront. And the program he used back then is still followed by many today. During his career, he fought off riders with incredible style like Kevin Windham, incredible speed like James Stewart, and incredible grit like Chad Reed. But in every championship he competed for, Carmichael always prevailed. Today, he shares his knowledge and passion for the sport as NBC Sports expert analyst on Supercross and Motocross broadcasts, as well as consulting for brands and running events. He's always giving back to the sport that made him. Carmichael was inducted into the AMA Hall of Fame in 2013 and the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America in 2015. Ricky Carmichael, the greatest of all time. As our MX versus ATV Legends bio, awesome to have you here in the booth, RC, the all-time leader in moto wins, podiums, couple perfect seasons, you name it. <laughs> and we celebrate 50 years of history. I know you're proud of your piece of the 50 years of the sport. Well, I am, and I appreciate it. The older that I get, and just to race with all these legends and be a part, and I'm in some great company. I'm thankful for the opportunity that I got. All right, we're going to put you to work here, though, with our MX versus ATV Legends track map. Go for it. It's a good one, and I tell you what, the weather has put it on for us today. It is hot out there, <laughs> hot. A lot of uphills, a lot of downhills. They changed the section, kind of the first half of the track. You can see it's really condensed. A lot of different lines, deep runs going through there. Keeps the racing a little bit tighter. I kind of like that, a little bit different than uh, the rest of the track where it's long sweeping turns. KTF there you keys go. to the moto here, RC. What do we yep, need to do? A lot like the first moto, optimizing the gearing. Like I said, in elevation, these guys are down about 20% in horsepower. And then keeping the momentum up through the corners. Not as important on the 450s because they have more torque and horsepower. However, and one more that isn't put that isn't listed. Okay. And that's to improve on what you did from the first moto or whatever you learned from the first moto. Make the adjustment, whether it was the bike setup or what you're doing on the track recognize what that was and make the adjustment so you can be better. Yeah, the only rider who got it perfect was Eli Tomac, and it's going to be hard to stop him here in Moto2. He came from behind in Moto1. Can the home state native do it again? Reds are up. Gates down. Better start for Tomac this time, and he gets edged out. Is Tony Caroli going to get two hole shots today? Yes, he is. That's three hole shots in a row in the series. Motosport.com award going to Caroli again, and Roxas right behind him again. Yeah, you can replay the first moto. Look at <laughs> Kenny going for the inside. Yeah, he's good at that. It's the same area he was making passes in moto one, and there he is, he's got it. I yeah, just gonna, like moto yeah, one. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of what you saw the, in moto one here, these first couple laps. Kenny's going to check out. So I'm looking where Eli Tomac is. I suspect that Eli Tomac, Jason Anderson, Chase Sexton are going to do everything that they can possibly do to not let Ken get such a big of a gap. It's McElrath in the 12, then the 21 of Anderson. Good start for Alex Martin on the Muckoff FXR Club MX Yamaha. Haven't seen him up front early this year in the races. Oh, Anderson able to squeeze by and Tomac a few positions further back. Yeah, well, these, these two positions for Jason Anderson and Eli Tomac, they got to get by Tony Caroli and Shane McElrath as quickly as possible. If they're able to do that, they are going to minimize the, the gap that Ken Roxon's going to be able to put on there. That was a nice run by Jason Anderson going down the out, out around the outside before that triple up. Sets him up for the inside here on McElrath, and he just goes right into McElrath's line, says, you're not going to stop me. Well, oh, he might get two. Yeah, he's going to get a two for right here. If he's able to do this, this is going to be huge. Oh, not quite. The very crafty nine-time world champ stops him. Anderson is all over this racetrack looking for room. Some great racing, some great footage by the drone shot. You can see everything develop. Main lines right now are the inside. But man, look at that gap that Kenny's already pulled out. Tomac, meanwhile, working on McElrath at the bottom of your screen. Let's see if Anderson could square up. Caroli. He tried. Ah, uh, yeah, but the Italian, he's wise. He beat him into the spot. 
Tomac has busted through. And he's bringing his teammate, Christian Craig, with him on the Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing Rides. Craig was from last to 10th in the first moto. Let's see what he can do with a start. How about Caroli? Making it happen. Got to wonder if he's made some adjustments, whatever he may have learned that first moto. Well, it's interesting for him to learn these tracks. We're in Europe, they race and practice on Saturday and then race again on Sunday. Lots of track time. Here, you get about two laps to survey the track and then it's on to the stopwatch and qualifying. So he's learning these tracks quickly. He's talked a lot about the differences in the American bike, which the rules say have to be based on a production motorcycle. That frame is right off the showroom floor in Europe. They can make changes. Oh, Chase Sexton, where did he come from? Challenging Craig. Quick pass by Sexton. Oh, he makes a mistake coming out of the corner, though. The bike high side just a little bit, but he's able to make that pass stick. But you look up at the time and his score, and Ken Roxon already three seconds ahead, Ooh. which is massive lead this early on. He's going to continue to pull away these first few laps. Then he can just put it on cruise control. Oh, Eli Tomac cross rutting, coming out of the rut. He's losing time. And that's what Sexton was looking for to get right to the rear wheel of Tomac. Oh, Anderson's down. Oh, Anderson was trying to close that gap on Roxon, and that's costly. Yeah, that's a big time loss for Jason Anderson. He's going to have a lot of work cut out for him. Getting behind these guys going to be incredibly hard to get by early on in this race where these guys are relatively fresh. It's Ryan Dungey in 10th, so that'll put Anderson in 11th. Oh, man, Anderson was right where he wanted to be, ahead of Tomac, ahead of Sexton. Yep. Here's a replay. Well, you can see how rough it is. He's coming up the inside. Everything's good. Oh, and see, they were coming through there. There was two ruts right there on the inside. He just, the front, the rear wheel comes out of one rut. The front wheel is in one rut. Uh-oh. Oh, Alex Mardu had a good start. He is down and off the side of the track. Looks banged up. Uh, tough for the veteran out of Minnesota making a move to the 450 class this year. This, this dirt is not forgiving whatsoever. But yeah, Anderson, he is, his front wheel was in one rut. The rear wheel is in another. As he accelerates coming out of the corner, that rear end just drifts over into the wrong rut. And down he goes. Oh, we have the Alex Martin crash. Look at the top left. Top left coming into the corner. Oh, he gets sideways. Ooh. Wow, that was a tough hit. That bike starts to swap, steps out. Uh, that's Man. a high side there, yeah. almost like a road racing crash. And that hurts when you hit the ground at that speed. Back to our leader, Ken Roxon. Gap is already 4.7 <laughs> seconds. That is crazy. Hey, Sexton has slipped around Tomac. Sexton is up to third. So whatever they worked on between motos, hey, you say it was key to the moto. That's right. He's doing it right now. He's improved big time. Ken out there knocking out 218s. The other guys are 219s, 221s. He's second and a half faster a lap. And so hard to spot a guy like Ken Roxon that kind of time early on. You just dig yourself a hole straight out of the gate. Here's that battle. Sexton, who's gotten around Tomac, and then Craig still behind his teammate. They were this close early in the moto, so Craig's running with him. Then it's McElrath, Barsha. Dungey's moved up to eighth, and Anderson up to ninth. So remember, they made up at least one position there with the crash by Alex Martin. Back to Sexton. This is what he needs to be in front of Tomac and Anderson. You know, we'd like to be a little closer to his teammate. Yeah. How about Tony Caroli, by the way? Man, he is keeping the gap. Yeah. The head of Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac, those guys aren't really reeling him in. I mean, he is a nine-time world champion. Yes, yes. We, we knew there'd it. be an adjustment period. Uh, he has figured something out. Much better performance here in the second moto. Had the whole shot of moto one, but they were able to get him. First seven minutes here have been very good for the 36-year-old out of Rome, Italy. 36. Unreal. Still out there getting after it, riding at this level. That is extremely impressive. And he was in the thick of it for the World Championship last year until some crashes late. We'll show you the motorsport.com whole shot replay. And show you how for the second time today and third race in a row, Tony Caroli got the start. Here you go, a lot like the first moto. Perfect starting position. He's able to brake a little less hard. Let the bike fade out just a little bit. Let the momentum carry him around the outside. Ken fighting there on the inside. Just radius of the corner was too tight for Ken to really apply the throttle like 
Tony was able to do. All right, now Sexton starting to close on Caroli and pull away from Tomac. So Sexton, a completely different rider here in this second moto. Well, he was the fastest guy on the track. He ran a 216 to Ken Roxon's 217-2. So he's got the speed. He's the fastest man on the track, but he's six seconds behind the lead. And he worked the inside all the way around that hill. If he gets a little closer to Crowley the next time around, he has different lines. Let's see if he can put them to work. But it's going to be tough with a KG veteran oh, like Crowley. Bump, bump, bump. Announcer's cursed there. I said it's going to be tough. He makes a mistake, and now Sexton is there. Yeah, he high sides coming out of that corner. Now looks going to go to the outside, keep his momentum up. And he just uses up too much track. And oh, Crowley was inside. too far inside in that corner. Lost more ground. Sexton takes advantage of a couple mistakes. No! Crowley's right back on him. Can he hold this inside line? Not quite. We'll give you the double screen here to show you. Ah, uh, he's got to hold him off right here. He's got to stay strong. Now he's good. He's got a clear track. Tony fighting back, though, on that outside. Uh, you love to see it. The other battle you're watching is Anderson trying to make ground up. He is battling with Dungey for the number seven position. Sexton appears to have it locked down on Caroli. That moves him to second. And now it's up to the watch. Can he start closing the gap on his teammate, the Honda HRC rider, Ken Roxon? He will have Anderson. Yeah, well, that's it. He's been behind Dungey for yeah. several laps now. And not sure if he banged his bike up of some sorts when he fell down. Who's to know? But I, I, I expected him to move up the pack a little bit quicker than what he's been able to do here. So now the battle is between Tomac and Caroli for the number three spot. Oh, and Tomac, a quick strike. Yeah. Just like that. Well, you got overall implications on the line. Eli Tomac is going to have to get by Ken Roxon if he wants to win this overall. Back to this battle. Did Anderson make the move? No. That's just No, that's Barsha. Barsha. Yeah. 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 Hard to tell the red and the orange here from this high up. So he has not passed Dungey. Dungey's still in seventh. McElrath, solid run in sixth. And in the other Kawasaki you see here is Joey Savachi working his way back from ACL surgery. Second race back. He is a fill-in for Monster Energy Kawasaki with the injured Adam C. and Cerullo. He raced for this team and raced well for them a couple of years ago. Yeah. But it's tough to come back from injury and just immediately be at well, your own form. And I think it's an incredible comeback. What he was able to do last weekend, uh, his first race back after an ACL repair on a different bike, on that Monster Energy Kawasaki. Yes, he's had a lot of time on there, but I believe it's a new bike. No, Craig! Craig has a problem. He's just gotten back up, but Dungey is around him. Here is Anderson as well. And Craig cannot get it back up to speed. That bike is banged up. Yeah, it is. His handlebars are completely tweaked. The right side is down. The left side is up. All right, he's putting in a great run. So now we have Dungey. That should be sixth place. Yep. Anderson's still not able to get him. I talked to Dungey earlier. And uh, he admits Hangtown is not a good track for him at all. So he had to try to avoid really making big bike changes. Didn't want to chase it at Hangtown on a track he's just never really been that successful. Never won an overall there, even in the prime of his career. So he's kept the bike basically the same from Hangtown to here. And he's trying to judge his results on feel. How does he feel? How does he feel physically and speed-wise? Not getting too hung up on the results. And a good job right now, though, holding off the rider that won last week's race. Working these insides, outsides. I love the option that this track gives the riders. This will be the mechanics turn. And let's see, Dungey goes inside here. And Anderson's far enough back where he's just going to choose to follow. If anything, Dungey's actually stretched it a little bit. And he's starting to close on Shane McElrath. Yeah, he's catching up to Shane McElrath. Dungey was fifth in both motos at our opener. That's the position he's closing in on now. That's where McElrath sits after the crash by Craig. And then it's Crowley fourth, Tomac third. Sexton gained 1.1 on his teammate Roxon last time around. Gap is 5.4 seconds, so still a pretty good one for Roxon, but plenty of time for Sexton to make it happen. Here's McElrath. The deal is at least four races with this team, but with Dean Wilson out with injury and Malcolm Stewart out with injury, you've got to figure he's in 
for longer term than that. Yeah, I mean, who who do they get to you know that's going to replace him? I mean, look what look at the place he's running. He's only going to get better. You know, I hope that he gets the opportunity and they extend the, the extend the four race deal to uh, through throughout the rest of the season. That'd be a great opportunity for Shane and feel like he'd be a great mentor to the younger riders on the team and a great asset to the team. Yeah, and he does work with Styles Robertson, rides with them during the week, the 250 rider on the team. We hear Craig went into the mechanics area. And they're kicking that front wheel, trying to straighten that motorcycle out. So tough break for Craig, who was riding very well today, but a crash leading his undoing. Magarath's got company. Dungey is there. Yeah, I just wonder if something's wrong with Jason Anderson here. If he tweaked the bike or himself and that little tip over because clearly he is off the pace of what he was running that first moto and early on in this race. Yeah, yeah, he had a big gap over Dungy speed wise in moto one. This time does not have anything for him, at least for now. So Dungy doesn't have to worry about the pressure. He's free to attack McElrath. As we head into this high speed section of the racetrack, not only do we get Ryan Dungy here, at the races, but his parents coming to the races again to talk to his dad, Troy. He's like, man, I haven't been here in six years. So many friends to catch up with. McElrath now, he knows Dungy's there. Dungy looking for a pass. Oh, -ho! thought he almost was going to lose it there. Leans the bike over, tucks the front end. That was a nice save by Ryan Dungy. Trying to square McElrath up. This is the mechanics turn. The pit boards come out. Dungy's reunited, by the way, with his old mechanic, Carlos Rivera. That's really cool that they were able to put that combo together. It was really the absence of Cooper Webb the former Supercross champ that opened up the door for this because Webb elected not to race motocross. Then they gave Dungey the green light. And uh, Ryan said he was uh, he already heard rumblings that they might have an opening. So he started riding and training. He knew there was a chance they were going to say we don't have room. But it all paid off. And there was a lot of curiosity about how Dungey would do. And also, as we said, how would he react? Yeah, and I think it's it's more about expectations. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter what we expect from him or what others expect from him. You know, it's what he's what what he's comfortable with. You know, it's it's a completely different dynamic of when he was racing and racing for championships. Clearly, he's not doing that now. I mean, he's you know he's a ways off of the leaders every single weekend, and I'm I'm sure he wants to get better. You know, every single weekend. However, I mean, these guys, you stay out of it for five years. It's it's tough. These guys are really good at what they do, and it, it's all about what his expectations are. And, um, you know, if it's just a different different era of racing now. Yeah, yeah. Can he enjoy himself while battling yeah. for fifth? Working just as hard as when he used to win these races. We're halfway through this moto. 15 minutes to go. 15 minutes, you could say 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Let's send it down to Will Christian. What you were saying there about Ryan Dungey was pretty much exactly what he was telling me here early on in the race today. He said, it's been five years. Five years is a long time. And he said that kind of race fitness that you need for these motos, that doesn't come straight back. That's something that you build up over time. But to answer your question that you are posing there, Jason, he, uh, posing there, Jason, he said yes, he is enjoying himself. And he's reminding himself every time that he's out there on the track how great it is that he's able to come back and, and look at racing and be able to enjoy it from this new perspective that he now has. Um, so I think he's, he's, he seems to genuinely being getting what he needs out of this does he want more he's a racer he's a champion absolutely of course but he, there seems to be genuine excitement there guys for what he's getting done right now oh will check out this battle right now <laughs> Dungy taking a couple of shots at McElrath he's trying he's doing everything he can but you got to give kudos to Shane McElrath he is he is keeping Dungy honest not just rolling over for this multi-time champ. That's a good battle, and they yeah, have is. put Anderson in the distance. Meanwhile, you can see the gap starting to close up front with the Honda men. We'll give you the double box to show it to you. Chase Sexton has got oh, yeah. the leader in his sights, Ken Roxon. This is going to be epic to see the different line choices that these riders take. Dungy mm -hmm. trying to set up McElrath, meanwhile, on the top side. And Sexton is all over Roxon and using, as you said, different lines. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. You just have to think that Chase Sexton knows where Kenny's weak point is. Might be right here. He's on the inside. And just like that, Chase Sexton has got the lead. 
Oh, Kenny's going to try to keep the momentum Whoa. up. He closes the door on his teammate. Contact between the two Honda riders, but Sexton is going to try to make a breakaway. Well, now the key is you start thinking about overalls and situations. You got to look at timing and scoring here. Tomax five seconds back. Roxton would oh, be looking Broxton. at a 2-2, and the 1-3 for Tomac would be enough for the overall. That's right, which is crazy. I, I know. <laughs> Happened last week also, but they pay points per moto. You know that Tomac is not just going to want to cruise it home in third. Oh, it changed in a hurry. Anderson's right back there on Dungey. Anderson looking to get around oh, a five. He charges down the inside. Yeah, he's creeping up on, on Ryan. I'm not sure if Ryan looks like he's lost a little bit of his aggression to me. Not sure if the... Elevation is getting to him, sitting down a lot. Yeah, now Anderson looking for an opening. Yeah. Working to the inside here. All the way to the inside. Got to be really careful, ride with a lot of caution. If it's not starting to not feel it, you're starting to get gassed, and that's where you got to be really, really safe and just ride smart. That's when things go wrong. Yeah, you want to see Dunch be able to build week in and week out. Don't want to see the big hit. Yeah. Trying to keep these guys at bay. Anderson is there. Anderson's got a line in the inside. Oh. Hops out of that rut. Not enough. He's going for it. He's got him, though. When I say got him, I mean, he's all over him. So one little slip up from Ryan, and it's game over. And there it is. Anderson around the outside. Makes the move. Dungey's going to try to get it back. Tiptoeing around the inside. Anderson has it. Nice fight there between yeah. these two. That was good. good job by Jason Anderson to stick with it. Go around the outside. And that was some good clean riding by Ryan Dungey as well to not force the issue. And you, so you assumed that Jason was faster. So Chase Sexton has got the lead, but the problem is fourth in Moto 1. It's going to be tough for him to win the overall today unless something changes. Right now, if you look at the points total, it's Eli Tomac's overall win. Roxon doing his best to keep yeah. Sexton in sight. Well, I'm looking at that timing and scoring right there. Tomac has closed the gap on Ken Rocks, and there's a bigger gap before. You can see he's only two point or two seconds off of Ken. So Ken's got to keep the pressure on. He's got to keep charging. Yeah, Tomac would love those points. He'd love to get around Roxon, even though he doesn't need it for the overall. Chase Sexton looking to get away and reset his season after a tough Moto One. Whew. Back in, stepping out there for yeah, Sexton. It is. Yeah. This track is really difficult in, in a way. And when I say it's 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 not very forgiving, the dirt is really hard. So when the bike starts to kick around a little bit, it snaps a certain way, whether it's left or right, really quick, and doesn't slide. So with no when when the bike doesn't slide, it, things catch you off guard, man. Chase is getting hung up by some lappers here. That's Kevin Moran's. He needs to get out of the way. He's holding up the leader. Can't say he didn't have blue flags. Yeah, it's yeah. extremely frustrating when you're in the lead and you got a lapper not surrendering. Sexton able to get through that, but I think Roxon is a little bit closer now because of that oh, exchange yeah. of Moran's. The blue flags continue to fly. Yep, got it down to 1.9. Yep. Second win for Roxon. Two things here. A, he's a little closer to Sexton, and he needs to be because you know Tomac's going to be strong down the stretch. Well, the last lap, Tomac ran a 2.17. Whoa. -oh. Sexton was a 2.19. Kenny was a 2.19. It's coming. This is what Eli does late in the race. Ten minutes and two laps to go. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. It's not over late in this second 450 moto. You can see the lead group. Chase Sexton on the top of the screen is your leader. 
Roxon is second, but Eli Tomac is on a charge. Stopwatch doesn't lie. No, and there you go. This is a great shot. You can see just how close Eli Tomac has closed up to Ken Roxon, and they're right behind Chase Sexton. A lot of racing going on here. They're coming up into lappers. That's going to hold up. Most of the time, the lappers hold up the leader opposed to the second place rider and the third place rider now they're they'll be aware of guys coming so they'll give way to the guy in second to the guy in third so this could be a great opportunity for both ken ken roxon and eli tomac and again tomac right now would be the weekend's overall winner even if he finishes in third but championship points are paid out per individual moto so he wants to catch sexton he wants to catch roxon this could be a battle to the end and roxon keeps closing on Sexton. Well, he does. It's like he's caught a, a breath of fresh air, mounting a little charge right here, catching up. And it's so hard to tell if it's the lappers as well. Like, how, how much is the lappers affecting Chase? They're definitely getting him the way. Oh, look at the lappers going to really hold up Kenny right there. Yeah, that did hurt him as we click off another uh, lap. Extremely frustrating, especially because it's like, when you're when you're following a guy and you you reel him back in, it almost breaks the riders in front of his spirit. Like, okay, boom, it gives you it gives you new new air, right? And you're like, okay, I think I can get this guy. But then when that gap gets broken, it's like it's a deflated balloon. So we go really back uphill. Position. Yeah, it's 1.8 the gap between Sexton and Roxon right now. 1.3 back to Tomac in third. But the big story was that Tomac has started to put in 217 lap times, where Roxon and Sexton were in the 219s. They just jumped back in the 218s. But either way, Tomac is still quicker, and he's right there on Roxon now. And he's got to stick with it, fight strong. Never give up. We're getting down to the wire here. You got about six minutes left, plus two laps. A lot of racing left. Anything can happen. So that new section of the track, they used to go straight down the hill, straight back up. Basically using the same square footage on the racetrack, just tightening up the corners to slow the bikes down a little bit and maybe offering up some opportunities to pass. We'll find out if it happens right here. Not enough. Tomac wasn't close. Close yeah. enough to show him a wheel. Well, it's funny because you see the guys going to the outside and you see another guy going to the inside. And when the guys are going to the inside, they're using less track. You're like, oh, this is going to be fast. He's going to gain a lot of track. But then when they're coming out of the corners, the riders that take the outside that are able to keep up the momentum just have so much more of an advantage on corner exit. It's like anything you gain coming in, you're going to lose coming off the corners. And another advantage of Tomac is the crowd. They can sense that he's getting closer to the lead duo, and they are starting to cheer him along. Roxon proving tough in this moto, not letting his teammate go. Can he hold Tomac at bay? Oh, Tomac's right there. Now yeah. only three or four bike lengths in it. Oh, that's what you want to see. Yeah. I can't imagine Tomac rolling over at this point. I mean, he knows he's got to get by Ken Roxon at this stage. And just, I mean, he doesn't have to for the overall, but just as from a points perspective, a championship doesn't seem like much, but that would be a big move and, and, and a mental statement as well. Yeah, if he could get three moto wins in a row and do it from behind, that would say a lot. And he's right there, not quite close enough. Roxon knew he moved over a little bit and the battle continues uphill. Yeah. Kenny goes on guard to block that inside. Does it again. Eli's gonna go way outside. How does he play it? He tries to cut underneath. How will he play this left-hander? Cuts back underneath again. Kenny, in it. Yeah, Kenny's a very intuitive rider. He knew that, uh, he had to assume he knew that Eli was going to go back up to the inside. So he's going to play some defense right now on Eli Tomac, kind of as the last stand. And what that's done is allowed Sexton to add to his lead. It's 2.6 as these two slug it out. Whoa, Kenny got a handful. The bike started to wheelie coming out of the corner <laughs> just a little bit. Some of that Honda horsepower. See what happens with Eli Tomac. I have a sneaking suspicion he might lay back just a little bit, kind of reset, and then make another charge. Right there, right now. Haven't seen many passes in this section, but when it opens up on the other side, you know Tomac's going to be going for it. Nice little exchange for Roxon through those corners, actually. Pulled away a bit. So Roxon weathers a storm from Tomac. <laughs> And he catches back up to him. Kenny's really good in that tight section. 
feel like he just he rides really light on the motorcycle, doesn't bury the bike into the corners. So he's able to roll through those corners and, and the bike has less resistance, which obviously you gain time when you do that. Then they get to the faster section. This is where I feel Eli Tomac kind of has an advantage on Kenny. So he makes up all this time and then Kenny pulls away on the tighter sections of the track. Man, that is like a jump line out of that corner. We saw Anderson doing that earlier. Now Tomac hopping out of that rut on the inside by the mechanics turn. Oh, Eli wasn't able to double that jump. And that. Oh, pressure corner. is off for Roxon right now. Oh. Eli coming right back on him. Yeah. That was crazy. an alarming amount of distance he just yeah, made. Up. It's like a yo yo. <laughs> Two minutes before the two laps to go sign comes out. This is going to be really interesting to see how it works with the clock. Will it be three to go oh, or two to go next time it. around? Yeah, Eli's he's right there. For it. He's going to try to shove it down the inside here on Roxon. There you go. He's there. He's got it. Roxon trying to go back to the inside. Almost makes contact. Beautiful corner by Roxon to repass him. Yeah, that was a great remount and attack by Ken Roxon. Sets Eli Tomac up, counterattacks. Gets to the inside to block the line of Tomac again. Tomac's going to go all the way to the wall. Can he make this line work? Ah, just so much distance on the outside right there. Roxon great on the brakes downhill, able to edge him off. Now, these corners were better for Roxon a lap ago. Let's see if he can do it again. Well, Eli's got to stay with it. I mean, he has Ken Roxon on the ropes right now. If he can stay close, if Eli can stay close right here, when they get up to that open section to the long, Fast, high-speed sweepers. I think Eli has a chance to get by Kenny. Yeah, Kenny not able to edge away this time. So Tomac, in Roxon's strong point of the track, was able to stay with him. And it's about to open up here, not only speed-wise, but it's going to open up to the fans, and they're going to be rolling right now. Yeah, you can see much. How he's much closer to Kenny right here than he was the lap before. Ah, he was so close. Like I said, he's got he's got to stick with it. Kenny is on the ropes right now. He's riding a little bit defensive. It's going to take a little bit of ec uh, extra effort by Eli Tomac to get past Ken Roxon. He's going to have to hang it out just a little bit, but I can promise you once he does it, it'll be over. And the countdown clock. Where is Sexton compared to the clock and the finish line? Will it be two to go or three? If you're Roxon, you definitely want it to be two. Here's that hop out of the line from Tomac. Not quite close enough, but closer than he was the last time around. Now, this downhill double, Tomac didn't get it last time. Got it. Got it this time. Not going to lose as much time. Oh, look, he's charging up the inside. Woo, right there, Roxon again, just able to move over enough to hold him off. Oh, this lapper is going to slow up Kenny. Sexton's already through. Clock hasn't expired. It's going to be three to go. If Roxon can do this, by the way, it would be huge for him to prove he can hold off Tomac down the stretch. Yeah, but it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, he's got to stick with it right here, grit it out. Oh, I like I like Eli's move right here. Oh, you see Ken play defense. Mm -hmm. Slowed up, hit the brakes just a little bit, so um, Eli couldn't come up the inside. Two crafty racers. They've been at it for a long time, and they've been racing each other like this for a long time. All the way back in the 250 class days 10 years ago and still doing it right now. Again, Tomac's going to try to rush this outside. Unbelievable speed there, and he makes it happen. Roxon able to bump him and get it back. Oh. Good fight for the 94. I like this outside line Eli, for good Eli drive. Tomac, yeah. I thought it was setting up, not quite. A for effort for Eli Tomac. Trying to make a pass on the outside like that against your competitor is so hard to do. You have to have an incredible amount of trust in your competitor that he's not going to do anything overly dirty. And this is some great racing by the two of them. Roxon showing some real fight here because Tomac took the measure of him in Moto1. Doesn't want to let it happen here in Moto2. Roxon has been very adamant that he can get back to his old form. He missed half. A Monster Energy Supercross with illness. He's showing some heart here. Oh, he's all over him right here. All right, back into this high speed stuff. Roxham is pretty good through here a lap ago, but listen to the fans. And that is all for Eli Tomac, the Colorado native here in his home state. But Roxon has something yeah, he in just that section. He just can't get, he just can't manage to get by him. 
he's made some serious surges. I think he's got one more good surge in him to try to get by Kenny. I mean, he is so close, just can't make it happen. That's a testament to Ken. To your point, not giving up, gritting it out, never quitting. And it's over as far as the battle for the lead. They are focused on each other. Sexton has the gap up to almost five seconds, so we'll stay with this one. Oh, nice line from Eli, trying to make something happen. It's gonna be two to go after this right-hander. Fantastic action. <laughs> it's like yeah. one foot in, one foot out. We're just sitting up yeah. here in the booth waiting. This has been a great exchange up this hill. Huge drive from Tomac, trying to get to the side. And knife underneath, and Roxon does it again. He slows down, won't let him get there. Now Roxon, or Tomac's gonna try the outside in. Not enough yeah, to bank that, off of. That, I, you just, it's too hard to make that pass back inside right there. I think Eli's best, best option around that first corner, I think that's gonna be his best option around that first corner. Oh, he's gonna go All around right the here. outside again. He loves it, the downhill. Who's gonna get on the brakes latest? Side by side, oh. and Roxon does it again. Bumps Eli out, and Eli, uh -oh. I think he might have said that's it. Pulls a tear off and lets him have a ton of ground. Yeah. Now that wasn't dirty or anything by Roxon. No. Nope. Take us through it, RC. Yeah, that was well, good stuff. Yeah, he goes, he goes through the same, goes for the same move. He's a little further behind this time, actually, which I'm surprised he still went for it. He, got, he has a lot of trust in Ken, and I feel like that might have been the last ditch effort for Eli Tomac to get by Ken Roxon now from an overall standpoint. He's got it in the bag. Yes, he does. But for the Honda boys, who were so great at the opening round, going one, two in both motos, you could sense Anderson was getting it back together last week. You could sense Tomac was getting it back together. They needed this. They oh, yeah. needed the fight back. Great response by that HRC, HRC Honda team. Been doing a great job, especially with Chase Sexton, getting him comfortable. Oh yeah, there were real rumblings mid-season about Sexton with the motorcycle struggling with it. And boy, have they ever put it back together for him with that opening round win. And now he's proving it's not just an opener thing. It's not just a California thing. This was big. Remember, he got Tomac and pulled away from him in this photo. Yeah, great ride. And when you're able to win, come up through the pack, pass all your competitors, there's not a better win, not a better way to do it. Heading toward the white flag here for Chase Sexton. Just missed of the Moto wins last week, fourth in Moto One today. This would be huge. A response of the highest order, and for good measure, his teammate Roxon looking for second. Caroli holding on. He's in fourth, McElrath fifth. Anderson finally gets the measure of Dungey for sixth. Dungey back to seventh. Marcia Savacci Plessinger, that's your top 10. March Banks. Craig had a crash. How is that possible for Craig to be in 12th? Thought he had visited the mechanics area. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. Yeah. Marshall Welton getting the call up to the Twisted T Progressive HEP Suzuki team. Great ride by Marsh in 13th ahead of his teammate Brandon Hartraff. Miller and Rod Bell, that's 15, 16. Tristan Lane, Bryce Gardner, Grant Harlan, and Josh Gilbert. Rodder out of the UK, rounds out your points paying positions here. Chase Sexton, great run. Not much more you can say about it. He needed to strike back after fourth in Moto One, and he did. And Roxon and Tomac were coming after him. They got the yeah. gap down to about second and a half. Once they started battling, he pulled away. I know guys like you, everybody, every one of the old Rodder, they look at that riding style of Sexton. That's kind of the, the way riding is done in the modern era. Yeah, a lot of standing up. You'll see they rarely take their feet off the pegs going through the corners. And uh, that's the new generation. Roxon does it as well. And Eli does it as well. You point out when you see Ryan Dungey coming back into action, how different it looks. Oh, yeah, it's completely different. I mean, he sits down way more than these guys do these days. And um, these guys ride with a lot more balance and uh, let the bike work underneath them and just completely different. You know, this generation is different and for good measure, I believe. Everybody's been waiting, yeah, for that style and form and speed. Oh, no! Sexton has gone down, he's tipped over. He's got 3.8 seconds to work with on Roxon. I believe that was a no. lot brighter. No, no, that was Roxon! Roxon is going to steal the moto win on the last lap. We have seen this before from Chase Sexton. 
Back in the Minneapolis round of Monster Energy Supercross, he had a short win slip through his fingers. And now we have to do the calculations for the overall. I believe it's Roxon, gonna be Ken Roxon. He, he's going to win the overall here for the second year yeah. in a row with a 2-1. And all of that fight to hold off Tomac is going to pay off. Ken Roxon has won <laughs> in Thunder Valley. Unbelievable. Eli Tomac probably thought he has the race win right here. Yeah, so I little just does see, he know. Yes, because Sexton got up in front of him. That's right. I just saw the body language of Tomac. I think he just figured it out. Roxon wins with a 2-1, and Sexton coughs up a Shermoto win in the last lap. Unbelievable. That is nuts. That is absolutely nuts how that happened. Ken Roxon made some bold claims before this season about heart and digging deep. He stayed close enough to take advantage of this. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. It is over. It came down to the last lap. This crowd is probably stunned because it looked like an Eli Tomac victory was in route. It was until the last lap. Let's show you with the Lucas Oil Race recap. Antonio Corolli's got to start style. Three whole shots in a row for the world champion out of Italy. Ken Roxon's not too shabby off the line either. He quickly goes for the lead. There it is. And you know when Roxon gets the lead, he's going to start stretching it. So who is going to challenge him? Eli Tomac, Chase Sexton, the rest of the riders in the fight. And eventually Sexton would get there and take the measure of his teammate for the lead. Well, that was a great pass by Chase Sexton. And Pulled away, pulled away, and then the guys, I feel like Ken and Eli reeled him back in just a tad. Here's the critical juncture, last lap. Oh. A few moments to go, and he tosses it away. And there, Ken Roxon slips by, and that is gonna give him the overall win for the second in the first moto earlier today, and a moto win here. He is so good at this track, RC. Well, and he is, and that is five wins out of seven attempts, seven, Moto wins out of 14. This guy, if you're a betting man, this is the one you want to put your money on when we come to Thunder Valley. Crosses that Lucas Oil finish line with a surprise win, taking it away from his teammate Sexton, who handed it over on the last lap. And that means that Tomax 1-3 is not going to be the overall winner. All right, we've got Will on the podium. We'll talk to Ken Roxon, who showed some real heart today. What a fight, Jason, and the crowd really appreciating what you guys were doing out there. Ken, congratulations on that one. All that work you put in to hold off Eli there paid off right there at the end when that was unfortunate what happened to Chase. What went through your head when that all just came together at the end? It's about being relentless, you know. We do this for you guys. You guys were freaking amazing. We had the greatest battle going on. I just never wanted to give up, and we put in so much effort this week to get the bike better, and... Uh, and we did, um, yeah, we still have some work to do, but hey, I'm, I just want to get better each and every weekend, and uh, that's what we did. I never wanted to give up, and it was unfortunate that Chase went down, but I'll take it anyway. You know, I'm so happy to be up here, and uh, I dedicate this win to my, uh, to everybody that's behind me, especially my team. They keep believing in me, and uh, I'm so stoked right now. We can hear the crowd right now. Congrats, such a gritty performance. Congratulations, Ken. 21 times Ken Roxon, a race winner in this series. And this one was as dramatic as they get. You see now he edges out Tomac in overall points for the day. Rough one on Jason Anderson in that second moto. That was costly. Yep, especially from a points perspective. Yeah, sixth place in that second moto. C loses 12 points on Roxon today. Let's send it back down to the podium with Will. And the crowd just cheering again, obviously, for the hometown hero here. <laughs> Eli, congratulations. Wow, that just changed in a heartbeat for you. Just so close. Um, you just, a barrage of attacks on Ken there. Fantastic battle for us to watch. Yeah, that was a lot of fun racing. Uh, gosh, we were, we were so close so many times there. I, I gave him my all. I tried twice on the downhill and uh, couldn't make anything happen. But, uh, you know, it's always fun racing, Ken. You know, we both raced each other really clean and, and just, uh, you know, always have good battles with each other. So, bum not get the overall, but good weekend for uh, star racing. Yamaha, Monster Energy, uh, Bell Helmets, Alpine Star, Oakley. Uh, just thank you, everyone, and thank you, Colorado. So much fun to watch you, as always, Eli. Congratulations.
Oh, that was another <laughs> in a long line of classic battles between those two. Epic battle. Great job by Ken Roxon for holding off the, uh, Eli Tomac. Yeah, wow. Roxon made some claims about that. He would be yep. a fighter this year, and he proved in that second moto, no doubt. 250 Moto 2 coming up top of the next hour, but let's go back to the podium. Down here now, Jason, with Chase X and Chase. Not even sure what to say. That was, um, you look stunned by that right now. Um, just give me your thoughts. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I just, I came into that corner, got a little end swing with the rear and cross started. Um, <clears throat> it's a bonehead mistake. Um, that's the last one I'll make this season. So uh, it's, on, it's up from here. Thanks, Chase. Ah, well, you like those words? Well, I do. He better not make it again or we're going to get after him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're finished with our 450 Moto 2. Stay with us here on MAV-TV. 250 Moto 2 coming your way.